Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Thomas Bronswaar in which he tells the story behind his classic Close Horizon. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. All right, here it is, the story behind Close Horizon, my interview with Thomas Bronswaar. Enjoy. Thomas Bronswaar is a Dutch DJ and producer who is active in the scene since 2003. He is known for trance releases under project names such as Arizona, Lost World, Avalon and of course under his own name Thomas Bronswaar. For this week's vlog I sat down with Thomas in his studio to ask him about Close Horizon, which was the very first track he did under his own name back in the year 2005. My first question to him was how old he was when he became interested in music. I was quite old when I became interested, seriously interested in music. I think I was about 13 or so when I started playing video games, specifically Wipeouts on the PlayStation, at a very electronic soundtrack, and uh, that's when I really became hooked. So it was, it was a little bit in my teen years. Okay, so do you still remember some of the bands or the acts that you did listen to back then? I do, and so don't laugh at me, but the very first band I ever bought an album from was actually the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I was really into the Backstreet Boys when I was, uh, this was when I was maybe nine or ten or so. And uh, so that was my first, and then as I said, I got into the electronic stuff, started buying those CDs. Yeah. And around what time did you start with making music yourself? I think that was when I was 14 or 15 years old. And um, I listened to these, these electronic tracks and I just had no idea how do people make sounds like this. How do you get that done? And so I just typed in Music Maker into Google. She landed me with Magic's Music Maker, one of the simplest programs where you can sort of assemble little blocks of pre-made music. And so that's how it started. Okay. And do you still recall your very first ever release ever? That would be Arizona and Greg Murray Daylight on the German label Afterglow. Ah, yeah, I was yeah. 17 years old at the time, 2002 or 3. Oh, that's pretty young for your first release. It was. Yeah, yeah. So um, for this interview we're going to talk about your track Close Horizon. Um, was there anything that did inspire you when you started to work on that track? Many things. Uh, I can name two tracks that inspired me particularly for Close Horizon. One of them was uh, Sonder van Dorn, who was doing this tech trancey sound at that time. One of his tracks was Dark Roast, was the name, and that track had this sort of dark, stabby synth thing in the break that really inspired me, and I tried to reproduce that when I made Close Horizon, although that ended up being more of a trance anthem, but it was this Sander van Dorn Dark Roast track, that was the, the inspiration. There was also a track by, by Finn, it was under a different uh, alias, it was called Mind Markers, was the alias, and the track is called Alive Again. Check it out on YouTube, almost nobody has heard this track, it's very old. It's not well known, but it has this particular um, sound in it that you'll recognize that's also in Close Horizon. So it's those two tracks you can sort of go back and listen. Okay, so um, can you tell a bit more about the production process of Close Horizon? Yes, happy to. So uh, let's see, I was 17 years old. I was living in, uh, in Utrecht at the time as a, as a student. So I had my little one bedroom uh, studio and uh, I had uh, borrowed an LCD screen from Galen Bear, Passiva uh, at the time. It was this tiny 14 inch LCD screen. So I was you know, looking at a few kicks at the time, I remember. And um, uh, yeah, I put it together in my uh, in my student room. And what's funny was that uh, my mom got me this music magazine. She knew I was into making trance and electronic stuff. So she got me this British magazine, forget the name of it, and it had a sample CD that came with it. And um, there were some percussion loops on the sample CD and I used those. And then also I had uh, taken a little bit of percussion out of uh, Sander van Dorn's track. I think it was Dark Roast. It was this little tiny percussion loop that I sampled from that track and used in Close Horizon as well. And so when it came time to release Close Horizon, I freaked out. I was like, oh God, you know, I used this thing from Sander, is this okay? So I actually sent him an email and I said, uh, hey Sander, I'm a big fan of your stuff. I'm about to release this, this record and uh, it has a little bit of sampled percussion from your track in it. Uh, are you okay with this? Should I put your name on the release or what do I do here? And so uh, he got back to me and he said, uh, hey Thomas, I heard your MP3 and yes, I can tell that uh, my little bit of percussion is in there. 
I said, you don't need to put my name on the release, but I would ask you not to do this again. Oh. <laughs> Quite a strict but fair uh, yeah. response. Yeah, he, was, he was still nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So uh, how long did it take you to finish the track? Good question. It took me probably... I never work continuously for days on end, so this would have been spread over a couple of weeks, but I'm guessing maybe 30 hours or so yeah. of work, something wow. like that. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that's not that bad. No, it's not. I mean, usually I find that either it goes, a project sounds good and you can finish it and it's fine, or it doesn't really have that X factor, it doesn't really make me happy, and then I can spend weeks on it. And it'll, mm -hmm. Generally, in my experience, it'll never get there. So. <laughs> yeah. so what was the hardest part of the production? Well, the hardest part, let's see, at the time, I think that Close Horizon was one of the first tracks where I was responsible for the whole thing, the ma the mixing and, and whatever, because I had done collaborations before with Greg Murray, I mentioned, and Paul Moulins was an important collaborator of mine, and those guys were more experienced, so they would generally take care of you know finishing the track and making it into an entire product. So mm -hmm. Close Horizon, I think, was either the first or second time that I did that myself. And that gave me insecurity. You know, I knew I was writing melodies that were nice and all of that stuff, but can I put it together into a coherent whole? Yeah. So that, that took you that, that took you quite a while, I guess. Yeah, and it was certainly a thing that, that gave me the most anxiety. Like, yeah. it made me wonder, am I doing this right? Yeah. So is there a story behind the, the, the title? Yeah, I think the track itself when i when it started coming together and i hear, heard it myself you know I, that's one of my favorite parts of producing when you hear something new your, yourself for the first time and when it starts to come together and it sounds good you know and i thought that sounded good and it gave me this sense of speed and flying forward and so i got this notion in my head of flying forward so fast that you begin to approach the horizon which doesn't really make sense from a physics point of view but uh, it worked from a poetry point of view so i guess that's uh, that that's how i ended up with that title yeah. that's a cool title thanks thank yeah, you yeah. so was it difficult to find a label for the track once it was finished no, not in that particular case. I um, had done a couple of releases before um, with those collaborations that I mentioned earlier. And that's something I, I recommend even for people starting now in production to find someone to collaborate with if you're not really sure whether you have the connections or the know-how to finish an entire track. But if you're writing melodies or ideas that are interesting, reach out to people and see if they want to collaborate. I think that's a great way to get into the door and make it less of a risk for labels too. Um, so I'm on a tangent here. What was your original question here again? Yeah, if, if it was uh, difficult to find a label for the track. Right, right. So in the case of Close Horizon, I'd done some of those collaborations. I knew labels, uh, and so I just sent. The, I knew who to send this demo to, and then yeah. they they really like Close Horizon, and so uh, yeah, it wasn't a, for that track. It wasn't difficult. Sometimes okay. it is for that one. It yeah. wasn't. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, Close Horizon was the first track you released under your own name. Um, so why did you decide to use your own name for this one? It was really a decision made by the label and me simultaneously. It's um, I like the track myself, and it was important because I was getting, I was starting to finish my tracks myself and, and getting, you know, starting to build my own name as a producer. And the label said, we think this one sounds good enough now for you to to release it under your own name. They saw that as a sort of a, yeah, as sort of an accolade for the yeah, track. To yeah, yeah. So, um, do you remember some of the DJs that were playing the track? I remember thinking that uh, it was my first release and under my own name and everything you said. I remember, uh, you know, if one of the big boys plays this, I'll be really happy. So Armin or Tiesto or Ferry or whatever. And they all ended up playing it. <laughs> I remember I was at a friend's um, in Enschede who was studying there and uh, they had on ASOT, Armin's uh, State of Trance. And suddenly I just heard Armin say, hey, the tune of the week is by Dutchman Thomas Bronzeware, Close Rise. And I was like, holy shit, you know, got tune of the week? That was great. So, uh, yeah, I remember all of them. I remember who played it. So it was all of the big guys, and I was super stoked. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. Two years after the original release uh, on the Yakuza label, the track came out via Paul van Dijk's label Vendit as well. Um, do you know why there was a gap from almost two years between the Yakuza release and the Vendit release? I don't know, nobody ever really <laughs> sat down and told me, but I would guess it's just because um, PVD was just so busy at the time. He was doing Politics of Dancing 2. And this was another crazy thing. Uh, we just released Close Horizon, and um, United gave me a call, the, the label, and said, Paul van Dijk really loves this track and wants to remix it and bring it out on Vendit. So I fainted. I was like, what? <laughs> it's my first track and PVD wants to remix it? 
Um, and that actually never really ended up happening, unfortunately. Yeah, he made an edit for it, Paul van Dijk did, so there's like this edit of Close Your Eyes and that's on the politics of dancing. But in the end, um, things turned out okay. It was actually Giuseppe Ottaviani who ended up remixing it for the release. But that, yeah, as you said, Paul wanted it, but then Politics of Dancing, I guess, took a long time to complete yeah. and then yeah. came out after that. Yeah, you already mentioned it, like uh, Giuseppe Ottaviani did uh, remix a track for the Vendor release uh, and also uh, Kuvdam and Plant. Plant. Um, did you have a say in choosing the remixers? Hmm. I don't think I did, but I love both of those guys. Uh, I loved all the artists on Vandit, so it was never an issue. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, were you already DJing around the time of the release of Close Horizon? I think it started just around that time. Yeah, yeah. 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 So do you still remember your very first ever DJ gig? Uh, yes, yes, I do. I, my first ever, well, the first time I played a record in a club, certainly, it was a kind of an interesting story. As uh, I traveled to LA with my friend Finn, uh, who was doing uh, releases at the time, and um, uh, my other friend Christina, Christina Sky, she sort of showed us around LA, and Finn had a gig in one of the big clubs there, Avalon, I think it was. Uh, and um, I was a 17 year old kid, I was just kind of randomly tagging along and Christina kind of to get me into the club, she was kind of like, ah, oh, this guy's playing too, like don't worry about it, yeah, he's a DJ too, let's let him in. And so I was like, all right, you know, just let me in. And then Christina goes like, all right, now you have to put on an actual record so these people believe that you're a DJ, you know? So I was like, all right, cool. So I actually got to play like a track at, uh, at a big club in Avalon, <laughs> uh, just because of Christina's amazing uh, management and connection yeah. skills, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you're not, you're not allowed in the U.S. Uh, like I think the the age is 18 you, that you can enter clubs. Yes, that too. So it was yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it was crazy. So did you did you spin a record or did you actually mix two records together? Uh, I it was on a CDJ, so mm -hmm. it was already in the CD day. But I mixed uh, I mixed two of them together. Yes, okay. I tempo matched it and I brought <laughs> it in, and it went okay. I think okay. it wasn't a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so in 2013 you released the Sundown on uh, Armada's State of Trance label, uh, but after that it took a long time before we heard any new music from you. Uh, what was the reason you stopped making music? Uh, it did take a long time and sort of looking back, Sundown was an appropriate title, right? Like the sunset mm -hmm. on... Uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't intentional by the way, but what happened was that, um, uh, you know, I became... Uh, uh, I started doing a master's degree in astrophysics and then a PhD in, in astrophysics. So science is also a big passion of mine and um, it was just so tough and so hard that I couldn't keep up music at the same time as uh, science. So for those years I focused completely on my PhD and sort of getting that done. Uh, and then I got the music bug again. I really started to miss it and wanted to, uh, to go back. Yeah. Besides tracks you released under your own name, we also know you from projects such as uh, Avalon and uh, Arizona, for example. Uh, but you're also making music under the name Oaken Mods together with your friend Koen de Boer. Um, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's, uh, I met Koen at the university. He, uh, so while I was doing my PhD, he and I became friends. He was also at the same uh, university. And he told me that he uh, is a conservatory trained um, composer. Uh, so he knows a ton about music theory and he's also really into electronic music as well. So the minute we met, which was in 2014 or so, we started saying, oh, we have to do something together. And we started jamming around in the studio. It took us a while to find our groove and really start making tracks that we love. And I think we're just hitting that point now. Yeah. So uh, did, did you already release something on that alias? We have released some stuff uh, on our own. It's been sort of an experiment so far. We've been experimenting with different genres of electronic music that we like, and sort of uh, we put up, out some tracks uh, independently through YouTube and Spotify. Um, starting to see how difficult it is to get people's attention. So it was an interesting, uh, an interesting experiment. And now we're sort of converging on this tech trancey sound, uh, and we have a release upcoming on um, Future Sound of Egypt's UV. Uh, imprints that we're super excited about and that's I think the sound we're gonna go for with Oaken Moths eventually this sort of uh, yeah. techy dark sound yeah. and when is that one coming out it'll be out later this year okay yeah but no the, the release date yet no I'm uh, also a little bit uh, I have to be a little bit tight-lipped about the details <laughs> uh, for that one still but uh, it'll be out later this year okay well looking forward to that um, what else can we expect from you in the in the near future 
working on lots of stuff, uh, both with Kuhn and uh, myself. Uh, I released a new trance record on State of Trance in 2019, uh, and um, uh, working with Kuhn on the Okenmoths uh, stuff. And I have a few other projects up my sleeve as well that uh, I'm keeping under wraps for a little yeah. while longer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely busy in the studio again. Yeah, and do you think there will be new trance tracks from you as well anytime soon? That's a good question. Um, it depends a lot on what inspires me at the moment. And uh, I think there's a good chance that I'm going to go back and make more trance tracks. At the moment I'm super focused on this Oaken Moths project and various other things. Yeah, makes sense. Um, out of all your own productions, do, do you have a favorite one and, and why? I think mm, Close Horizon is definitely one of my, uh, my favorites. Um, another track I made called Look Ahead, I really like that one too. It's the first one I made while I was living in Los Angeles and it took me a while to sort of find my balance there and start producing again. So that's an important track for me yeah. uh, emotionally. Yeah, I think there was a story behind that title as well, Look Ahead. Yes, there is, yeah. I don't know, maybe that's for another day or do you want me to <laughs> spill the beans yeah. on that one too? Oh, yeah, maybe you can tell it like quickly now. Yeah, for sure. Well, for that I was living with, uh, with Christina at the time. I was living at her, her place and she was doing lots of gigs. Christina Sky, and uh, one day she was playing a festival uh, uh, near LA and she said wouldn't it be fun if you just made a track today for me to play tonight at this festival. So I was like, oh, that's a cool challenge, you know, let's see if something uh, can, uh, can uh, I've seen I can get something out. And you know, at the time I had this super clear idea, you know, Signum Push Through, you mm -hmm. know that track? Yeah. I love the melody of that track and I had this idea, I want to make a melody like that, you know. And so that day I sat down and this track came out, Look Ahead, and I think it's, it has a melody that's a little bit like Signum's Push Through, so I was really pleased that it sort of came together. Very quickly made supporting beats and bass and stuff around it. Um, yeah, just uh, burned a CD and gave it to Christina and she played it at this rave. I have a video of that, uh, it was just super fun, you yeah. know, just to see it come together so quickly and then played out live. Yeah. And look ahead, like LA. Exactly. Look ahead. It has the initials in there of uh, of LA, of my uh, my new home time uh, town at the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was an important one. Yeah. So everything came together. Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah. And the last question: pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Um, that's a difficult one. Let's see. Um, I think, you know, sometimes I'll order Hawaii. Sure. So yeah, I have no problem with pineapple on, on pizza. Okay, good. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you, Tuan. It was a pleasure. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Thomas Bronswaar with the story behind Close Horizon. Thomas, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did another interview with Thomas and in that one he tells the story behind his track Constellation which is a really good story so keep an eye out for that one. Um, I hope to have that one online in a couple of weeks. Once again thanks for watching and until next time bye bye.